Hi, this is Stephanie Dale from the home front. Today I'm going to be taking you on a tour of our drip system. I'm going to show you what a well planned out drip system can do for your farmstead and what exactly you can do with it. Right off the bat, as you can see, there is no PVC pipe in this drip system. It's all done with drip tubing. The great thing about drip systems is that it saves water, it saves you money, it saves you time, and it's low pressure. And um, if we had to, we could tear it apart and reassemble it to work with our rain barrels. This is the beginning of our drip system. This should be the beginning of a, any good drip system. Ours is connect, connected up to this outdoor spigot. The spigot has a built-in back pressure valve, so we don't have to um, buy a separate piece and connect that up. But if you did, you would connect it up right here. Most low pressure drip systems should be connected after a timer or a shutoff valve. This is because the components of a low pressure drip system, like the screen filter, will not hold up under constant pressure. So you shouldn't connect it directly up to a faucet. You should connect it up, you know, after a timer, after a shutoff valve. The nice thing about having a timer on your drip system is that it prevents you from overwatering. It prevents you from forgetting about the system and leaving it on overnight or leaving it on for an hour longer than you should. Um, it's just one more tool you have that saves you time and increases the efficiency of your system. You can set this to come on every day, every other day. You can set it to come on for an hour or for two hours. Um, they're just really, really handy, inexpensive tools for your garden. What you're looking at right here is a 200 mesh screen filter that's keeping all the water clean before it hits your system. Stuff gets in your system, algae, debris, other stuff like that. It clogs it up and, and it doesn't work right. And you want your system to be as low maintenance as possible. Also, you'll see here is a pressure reducer or a pressure regulator that's bringing the pressure down to 10 PSI for our system. And this is an adapter. What this is doing, this is bringing the size down to where our half inch drip tubing plugs right into it. Coming off here is a little quarter inch line and that goes and feeds our raspberries. This is our main line tubing. If you follow it, well, for long enough, it will hit our garden. Here's the main line tubing in the garden. This goes off to all my beans, peas which are done for the, for the year, dill. It's all taking off from the main line tubing right here. And these are just drip tape takeoff adapters that are plugged into the main tubing. That's all that is. And we've used drip tape, known as T-tape, and that runs up each one of these rows and waters it. See right here, you can see it working a little bit. At the end of a drip tape, we have it crimped. It's not a plug, it's a crimp. However, at the end of a, of a mainline tube, you can see there's the plug. This is still my upper garden. Lettuce is mostly done and been harvested. And uh, each row I have going is being watered at this point in time by a line of drip tape, of tea tape. This drip tape is pretty cool stuff. It will operate just as efficiently as you're seeing right now under as low as 4 PSI. Right now everything's running on 10 PSI. It will work just the same with 4, which you can accomplish through a gravity-fed system. It's also watering my beans. Pull beans, some sunflowers back there, beets, onions, good stuff. Another thing that we do with our drip system is we use it to water our chickens. So it, we, just, we just get tired of hauling water to the chickens. So we've taken um, a tea 
We've installed a T right here, and we have more. This is mainline tubing. It runs off of here, up, and around, and we've installed a little valve right here. And if I were to open that, well, if I would lower it and then open it, um, water would come out. And here I have my container, containers and, and raised beds, and they're all on the drip system too. There's my uh, mainline tubing right there. I have little um, quarter inch lines with emitters running off of each one. Let me see if I can grab one. This is an inline emitter. Right there, you can see it. That's the emitter, that's the inline emitter right there. And it's giving this uh, couple of squash plants a half a gallon an hour, I believe. And in this bed, you can kind of see it. It comes up. We have a line coming off the main line. You come over here and you can see two lines of drip tape. And that's our cucumbers. And you come over here and we have potatoes and these are also connected to the drip system. If I can find the line right here. Goes in. And right there is an emitter, and right there is an emitter. You can see the red thing. The red thing is an emitter. When you want to increase the amount of water a plant is getting, you can add another emitter. Um, rather than getting one of those variable rate emitters, which I think are garbage, and messing with it all the time, you can just add another emitter. It's not that hard. Okay, if you follow our mainline tubing by the cucumbers, you can see how it goes into the garden that way. You can, there's also a T. We installed a T here and we're gonna follow it this way. Oh, there's another line right there coming off, a little quarter inch line, and that is feeding another rhubarb plant. And you follow this tubing line right here. It was feeding my my apple tree, but it doesn't need, it's on its third year now, so it does not need to be on the drip system. But you can put a fruit tree on a drip system. And you follow this tube around, there it is, and it goes around to another garden. So here we have the other garden, still no PVC pipe. And we have corn growing. This is, again, these are, um, I used row, takeoffs and drip tape. See, and there are the tomatoes. The tomatoes are also on drip tape. You can get drip tape to emit different amounts of water. Um, it just depends on, on, on what you're growing. And you can hit the end of the line here. Right there. The drip tape ends like the other ones do. It works really efficiently. Weeds don't like to grow in between the rows. Photobomb by the dog. Weeds don't like to grow between the rows because there's no water. It makes weeding easier. It makes keeping your garden up easier. Now let's go up to the front and see. What, oh, actually, there's one more thing. It's not the end of the line for this particular zone. If you keep following it along, the main line comes over here. It uh, is watering my comfrey, and this uh, quarter inch line comes off of here and into this little wheelbarrow, rust, rust, rusty wheelbarrow planter. I got some feverfew and what is that? Oregano growing. quarter inch line comes along this way. To the black caps. And these are my black caps. I put them in this year. 
They're growing pretty good. Okay, and we got more quarter inch line taken off from that. Eight, those lines go to blueberry bushes. Okay, there's a T. There's like a little mini T. A little mini T in the little quarter inch line, little mini T. And that's how it goes off to all these fruit bushes. And one cherry tree, which hopefully the gophers will leave alone. Right down here, double emitters. That's so that this little tree can get four gallons of water in one hour. Okay, well, that's my drip system. I hope you enjoyed the tour. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the, the article that I, I'm gonna link to this video, then um, I'd appreciate it if you'd visit my blog. Check it out, it's um, called The Homefront. And I believe the web address is stephaniedale1 at blogspot.com. Um, I'd appreciate it if you'd swing by and leave me a comment. And check up and see how things are going here on the home front.